Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject validability of metals and we are talking about the validability of quenched and tempered steel. In the previous presentation, we have talked about the different types of the QNT steels uh, with regard to the compositions, uh, the, the properties and the time uh, temperature time transformation diagram or isothermal transformation diagram. And in that one what we have seen that uh, if the QNT steels are subjected to the exposure at a high temperature say 1100 to 1300 degree Fahrenheit for long time then primarily it leads to the formation of the, the ferrite, uh, upper bainite and perlite and these are also very coarse. So, uh, a combination of such kind of the phases leads to the uh, reduced uh, or the poor uh, combination of the mechanical properties uh, especially with regard to the yield strength and notch toughness. On the other hand when the exposure is given at somewhat lower temperature say 950 to 1100 degree Fahrenheit uh, primarily we get the, uh, the ferrite and the upper bainite, but it is a little bit finer it offers somewhat better uh, combination of the mechanical properties. Uh, on the uh, on lowering down the temperature further uh, of the exposure at a constant temperature as a function of time Q and T steels uh, leads to the, the uh, ferrite and the lower bainite formation uh, like uh, uh, this is below 950 degree, cent, uh, degree Fahrenheit. And when the steel is exposed to the temperature uh, below 750 uh, degree Fahrenheit, uh, primarily we get the, uh, the lower bainite, ferrite and uh, tempered martensite. Since the martensite is formed at a high temperature, so it experiences auto tempering of the martensite which is being formed. So, the kind of properties which are realized due to the direct exposure of QNT steels at a temperature around 750 uh, degree Fahrenheit, we get primarily we get the auto tempered martensite, lower bainite and some amount of the ferrite and it offers a very good combination of the mechanical properties in terms of hardness, toughness, yield strength which are similar to that of the base metal. So, uh, uh, these uh, exposures are uh, means the, the, these transformations uh, uh, from austenite to the other phases are uh, primarily corresponding to the uh, constant temperature exposure, but these also indicate the way by which they will behave or the steel will behave uh, when the different cooling rates are exposed. Uh, so, if we see uh, like this diagram, uh, this is the uh, temperature condition say for an example uh, uh, in uh, of the QNT steel in austenitic state, if the cooling rate is extremely low like this. So, the temperature is decreasing as a function of time. So, this line is indicating the cooling rate, typical cooling rate say CR1. So, in this case primarily we will be getting the ferrite and the upper bainite and when the cooling rate is, is little bit faster, we will be getting the ferrite maybe lower bainite uh, which is uh, finer uh, in uh, structure and further if we cool it very rapidly then we are going to get the martensite. Since this transformation if we see is taking place at a higher temperature, so this martensite will be subjected to the auto tempering and this is what is the benefit is. So, actually this diagram shows the uh, transformations at constant temperature, but if we see superimpose the cooling rate lines then we can have some idea about the kind of uh, the phases which will be formed on cooling at a different rates. However, there may be minor shifting in the 
in these uh, lines which are indicating the start and the end of the transformation like this is the phase transformation start line and then this is 50 percent transformation of the austenite into the other phases this is 99 percent of the transformation of austenite into the other phases. So, these are the different lines which will be really showing which are showing the uh, that uh, the start uh, and the end of the transformation of the austenite into the other phases like it may be like 50 percent transformation or 99 percent transformation. Uh, so, uh, these lines may shift uh, a little bit when the, uh, the cooling is performed, um, uh, when the steel is cooled continuously. So, means the particular cooling rate is uh, imposed, but by and large the kind of phases which will be formed will be like this only. There may be variation in the time required to start and end the transformation, there may be little bit variation in the temperature at which these tra transformation is start and end. Apart from this, so uh, we can see here the formation of the ferrite upper bennite mostly we have to avoid because these deteriorate the properties. What we want mostly the ferrite lower bennite and maybe tempered martensite. These are the kind of phases that we are looking for. So, we need to um, during the welding we need to have the conditions which will promote the formation of such kind of the phases where ferrite lower bennite and the tempered martensite is realized and that is why it becomes crucial to control the kind of preheat that we are using the kind of heat input uh, which is being uh, uh, applied for a given composition and for a given thickness of the steel because these are two factors that will be governing the cooling rates as well as the temperature and the time conditions when the transformation will start. Composition affects the carbon equivalent directly affecting these uh, um, uh, the position of these uh, lines uh, start and end lines. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the thickness, pre temperature and heat input will be governing the cooling rate conditions. So, uh, um, the end uh, microstructure of the weld or the of the heat affected zone. Uh, will be influenced by preheat, heat input and the composition of steel and the kind of thickness of the plate which is being welded. And therefore, uh, we need to see um, uh, the typical aspect uh, related with the steel that is the hardenability. Hardenability with regard to the welding is important just to see that uh, the distance like uh, the, the heat is being applied uh, near the fusion uh, uh, near the faint surfaces at the center line of the joint uh, and uh, the fusion is uh, realized through the application of the heat. But at the same time some of the heat is dissipated to the base metal. So, first uh, the, the base metal underlying base metal apart from the weld jo metal zone is subjected to the heating at a higher rate followed by rapid cooling. So, uh, the, what will be the effect of rapid cooling that is what we can understand from the hardenability behavior of the material and uh, for that uh, we need to see that Germany quench and uh, hardenability test behavior of the different metal systems. So, the two most uh, commonly used uh, the STs like A514 or A517 having the two uh, grades like B and F which are different with regard to the composition further uh, like F is having the higher percentage of the nickel and the molybdenum while uh, these two uh, uh, element nickel is absent in the B uh, grade uh, and uh, F uh, and molybdenum is uh, present in the less quantity. So, because of the compositional difference uh, we will uh, find the different chromium uh, the different carbon equivalents and difference in carbon equivalents will be leading to the different hardenability behavior which we can see uh, from uh, this uh, diagram. What it shows uh, like the hardenability curve is, uh, uh, is realized through a typical Germany quenching test where in the system uh, the metal is heated in the standard size up to the austenitic state and then jet of water is uh, is applied from the bottom to quench the end. 
so this end uh, which is quenched is uh, 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 is subjected to the highest cooling rate and the locations which are away from the end which is being quenched they will be experiencing the lower or continuously decreasing cooling rates. So, uh, the kind of uh, the transformation which will be occurring uh, near the end which is being quenched that will be different than the other zones which are experiencing the lower cooling rate. So, as per the hardenability we will be having the different phases at different distances from the end which is being quenched and that is what we can see like this is the 0 distance from the surface and then 0 0.5 inch, 1 inch, 1.5 inch and 2 inch distance uh, like say for the typical uh, A517 and A514 two uh, grades of the steels like B and F grade. So, if we see B grade, B grade is having the lower percentage of the molybdenum and nickel is absent. So, nickel, no nickel and molybdenum is in less, lesser quantity as compared to that which is present in F grade where molybdenum is higher quantity and the nickel is also uh, present in like say 0.8 to 1 percent. So, because of the higher percentage of the alloying elements, it offers much better hardenability with this is what we can see uh, from this diagram. What this diagram shows, uh, so the, the, the specimen subjected to the Germany quench end test and uh, the hardness uh, distribution or the hardness value uh, on increasing distance from the end being quenched is measured and that is plotted. So, if we see this is the end which is being quenched and this is the increasing distance from the quenched end. So, uh, what we can see for both grades of the steel up to uh, say up to uh, 0.5 um, inch distance the hardness of both type of the steel is almost same, but on increasing the distance further away uh, from the 0.5 inch there is a sharp drop in the hardness of the hardness which is being realized uh, by the B grade is steel while the hardness of the uh, hardness uh, of the F grade is steel does not drop that much is still up to say distance of 1.25 inch uh, we can see that the hardness up to 25 HRC is realized in both grades of the steel. But further if we need uh, th if this is a minimum level of hardness then we cannot use the F grade steel from the hardness point of view. Uh, while uh, the F grade steel uh, will uh, be offering the higher hardness even um, up to the greater distance from the quenched end which is uh, reflecting from the higher hardness which is being realized up to 1.5 and the 2 inch. So, uh, higher hardness of the F grade steel uh, as compared to the B grade uh, steel of uh, uh, the 4, 514 and 517 type of the steels uh, is indicating the higher hardenability of the F grade steel as compared to the B grade steel. Uh, so, these are the uh, if we try to relate it with the um, with the welding then we will notice that uh, the hardness up to the 0.5 inch uh, like this is the end there is the fusion boundary and thereafter there will be different zones of the heat affected zone and which will be experiencing the different cooling rates. So, if we assume uh, that uh, 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 since the cooling rates are always high in the heat affected zone as well as in the weld zone. So, the distance up to which in the case of B grade is still the high hardness will be realized up to the 0.5 inch while the higher hardness uh, will be realized. Uh, Mm, in case of the F grade is still up to uh, say uh, 2 inch also. So, uh, higher hardness uh, of the F grade is still is not good from the welding point of view uh, as compared to the other steels where uh, high uh, not very high hardness is realized because high hardness increases the tendency for cracking. So, from the welding point of view high hardness or high hardenability steels offering higher hardness up to the greater distance is not 
considered to be good because it will be promoting the cracking tendency of the steel. So, from the welding point of view the B grade steels will be better as compared to that of the F uh, grade steel. Uh, since, uh, um, since, uh, 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 since uh, most of the Q and T steels since most of the Q and T steels having the elements like uh, um, molybdenum, vanadium, uh, even chromium in little quantity apart from the carbon of 2.22 uh, percent. And uh, when these are uh, um, when these are welded uh, of course, the heat affected zone next to the fusion boundary as well as the weld metal. Uh, these uh, produce uh, uh, the ferrite or uh, untempered martensite or the lower bennite. So, uh, to, to deal uh, with the uh, high hardness and low toughness situations uh, associated with the uh, low toughness properties uh, related with these steels, um, it may be required to relieve the residual stresses and uh, induce the toughness and for that it is required to perform the tampering treatment of the Q and T steels. Normally, uh, normally uh, the post weld heat treatment is not required uh, uh, of the weld joints of the Q and T steels because uh, after the welding in uh, most of the cases we get the weld metal and heat affected zone properties uh, similar to that of the base metal. But if you want to relieve the residual stresses and if you want to improve the notch toughness of the weld metal as well as the heat affected zone then the post weld heat treatment in form of tempering is performed. And uh, if we see the typical tempering curve for the Q and T steels which uh, is uh, um, having molybdenum, chromium and vanadium type of the elements apart from the carbon. So, these uh, steels show a typical behavior during the tempering as a function of the tempering temperature. So, in x axis we are having the tempering temperature and in y axis if we have the toughness and the hardness. So, hardness obviously will be uh, uh, reduced during the tempering and there will be improvement in the uh, there will be improvement in the toughness. So, uh, the typical uh, steels show the hardness uh, in as welded condition in general hardness is more because of the formation of untempered martensite, ferrite and the lower bennite. So, when the steel is tempered. Uh, we notice that uh, um, there is a marginal increase at a higher temperature of the tempering. So, uh, like say uh, uh, at around 1100, uh, 1100 to 1300 Fahrenheit tempering temp uh, temperature in Fahrenheit. So, say uh, 700. Fahrenheit to 1300 Fahrenheit. So, as the tempering temperature is uh, increased, uh, we notice the reduction in hardness and this is attributed to the tempering of the martensite. Uh, at the same time residual stresses will be relieved, but when the tempering is performed of the Q and T steel weld joints in the temperature range of 1100 to 1300 Fahrenheit, we notice that the secondary hardening is observed. So, the drop is not continuous, but the hardness drop is, uh, is uh, reversed a little bit uh, uh, when the tempering is performed at a high temperature and this uh, the rise in uh, hardness uh, on tempering over, uh, uh, over a particular range of the temperature from 1100 to 1300 uh, degree Fahrenheit is attributed to the secondary hardening, wherein the formation of the hard and stable carbides of molybdenum, vanadium and chromium carbides are formed in the steel um, weld joints in the weld as well as heat affected zone. So, this typical behavior uh, of uh, the little will gain in the hardness uh, 
during the tampering is attributed to the secondary hardening. Well, in case of the conventional plane, plane carbon steel, if we carry out the tampering as a function of uh, the tempering temperature, there is a continuous drop in the hardness. While the reverse trend, uh, uh, just opposite trend is uh, shown by the toughness behavior like this. So, um, toughness improves while the hardness uh, comes down uh, uh, during the tampering of the steel uh, weld joints. Now, we will see the, the kind of the weld joint design which is used. So, weld joint design means uh, uh, we there are different types of the weld joints which are used the most common one like the groove joint and the fillet weld joint. So, uh, theoretically we can use uh, um, any type of the joint uh, for uh, making the connections of the Q and T steels, but since the Q and T steels are of the high strength uh, like 50 to 150 KSI. So, because of uh, though especially those uh, high yield strength steels especially those which are of the greater than 80 KSI, uh, the, the, the joint design becomes crucial because, uh, because uh, the high yield strength metals uh, they have the less tolerance for the discontinuities, stress concentration and uh, irregularities uh, if they are present in the weld joint surface. So, uh, it is more uh, important uh, uh, that the weld is uh, designed very uh, properly for Q and T steels, uh, so that uh, the stress razors are minimum or they are minimized. So, uh, for this uh, uh, what uh, we can do to reduce the stress razors, what we can do? We need to locate, locate the joint favorably, means the joint is located in such a way that it does not fall in the high stress area. Second. Uh, the location is accessible for developing the weld joint. If the accessibility of the, the weld joint location is poor, then the, the, the proper control over the weld metal, proper penetration um, will be difficult. To have the good accessibility of the weld joint, it should be properly located. Then the type of the joint which is to be selected. Uh, in general for all critical applications where static uh, where dynamic loading will be there in form of fatigue and in, in form of impact resistance normally the groove joint is uh, used a uh, groove the butt joint configuration is used because it offers the minimum stress concentration um, especially when the toe of the weld is properly taken care of, while the fillet weld, fillet weld offer uh, has the inherent stress razor um, in, in its uh, design like uh, this is the kind of the connection which is to be made and if the fillet weld is made, uh, it will uh, be offering the higher stress concentration at the toe of the weld. So, the fillet welds uh, inherently uh, offer the higher stress concentration as compared to the groove weld joints. So, for uh, all those high stress uh, locations and uh, wherever the fatigue and the impact load and dynamic load conditions exist, groove, groove joint is to be used as compared to that of the, uh, the fillet uh, weld joint. Uh, 
one more aspect is there apart from the lower stress concentration as compare uh, in case of the groove weld joint is that easy inspection easy inspection uh, of the soundness presence of defect is possible in case of the groove uh, joint designs uh, as compared to the fillet weld so lower stress concentration and uh, the easy inspection of the developed weld joint uh, will uh, be more favorable for reducing uh, the failure tendency of uh, the weld joints of the high strength q and t steels uh, in case of the groove weld joint groove joint designs there are various options which are possible like u joint and the v joint are most commonly used for thin uh, plates uh, we prefer less to go for b well joint and the j joint configuration because in both these cases accessibility of the root is difficult so there are penetration issues we are not able to penetrate Mm, and the fuse the metal properly so uh, to to deal uh, to overcome the issues related to the lack of penetration it is generally not preferred to use the bevel and the j uh, groove geometries well we prefer u and v joint groove joint uh, designs uh, at the same time if the thickness is really for thick plates then we will be preferring the double v and the double u kind of the geometry so that uh, we can neutralize so that uh, we can neutralize the residual stress aspects so in this case the joint is designed both the sides in order to neutralize the residual stress development tendency so for thick sections reducing the residual stresses reducing the weld volume and making the welding more cost effective and more productive suitably the double uh, groove uh, designs in form of like double u or double uh, v groove joint designs should be used whatever groove design we use if the weld is made improperly like this by making the the weld having the toes if the toe is offering the higher stress concentration then it will become the site uh, of the weakness or site for the failure especially impact and the fatigue conditions so proper is smoothening of the uh, the weld metal with the uh, base metal must be realized through the suitable grinding and the machining processes so that the stress concentration at the toe of the weld can be uh, reduced and this is especially crucial in case of the high strength q and t steels having the strength greater than 100 uh, ksi uh, apart from this uh, 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 the the considering the stresses their magnitude and the type uh, the suitable uh, well should be designed Uh, so we need to keep in mind the what kind of the 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 uh, stresses will be applied during the service in terms of the magnitude and the type of stresses and keeping that in mind as per the suitable class of the weld uh, the weld cross sectional area should be designed so that uh, the 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 weld joint doesn't uh, experience the stresses beyond the acceptable levels and uh, Uh, in this regard 
proper weld joint design becomes crucial to maintain the service uh, stresses in the weld joints within the safe limit. Uh, so, the uh, joint design is crucial so that the stresses are uh, within the safe limit. Apart from that, other aspects like composition, microstructure, toughness, uh, the heat treatment, residual stresses, all these are the secondary aspects. The primary one is that the how the weld is being designed uh, so that the service stresses acting in weld joint is within the service stresses are within the safe uh, limit in order to offer the required uh, life of the weld joint under the uh, fatigue conditions. Now, I um, will summarize this uh, presentation. In this presentation, basically I have talked about the validability of the quenched and tempered steels and when these steels are tempered, what kind of the uh, hardness variation is realized uh, uh, and uh, then we have uh, seen the kind of the, uh, the points we should keep in mind uh, for designing the uh, weld joints for QNT steels. Thank you for your attention.